Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with the PC Machine and Tech Help Show. In today's video, I'm going to go over something I think a lot of people will like. Uh, as you know, I collect all kinds of free downloads. Uh, I've been doing IT work for about, I don't know, five, ten years now. And anytime I find a great tool or utility, I add it to my collection here at my website. And uh, my website's PCMichiana.com. And uh, you can go to the free download section to get access to all eight of these software packages I'm going to talk to you about today. <clears throat> now, today I'm going to tell you about eight software packages that are either licensed as freeware open source, which means freeware free per for personal use. Open source means they're free for business use. And uh, these software packages are essential to just about every single Windows machine out there, whether it be XP, uh, 2000, uh, Vista 7. And it will work with all. They will work with all of them as well. So let me get started because there's a lot to cover here. And I'm gonna do as much as I can in as little bit of time as I can. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I put PC Michiana recommended next to each one of these downloads. And remember, you can just get to my website through the link below this video in the description. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. Now Malwarebytes Anti-Malware, I've talked about in previous videos a number of times. It's basically a malware or malicious software removal tool, which includes viruses, uh, spyware, adware, and all those types of things. When you open up Malwarebytes Anti-Malware, the free edition, which is freeware, free for personal use, you want to update your Malwarebytes Anti-Malware software, go to the scanner, perform a quick scan. If it finds anything, repair it, and then usually if you find something, you're going to want to come back and perform a full scan. The definition base for Malwarebytes is probably one of the best out there that you can find, and uh, amazingly, they actually have this free for personal use. Now the second piece of software, let me scroll down here, uh, I, re I recommend Security Essentials, but there's a number of free antivirus tools here as well. I'm not going to go over the antiviruses because pretty much use whatever you're comfortable with. Right now I'm, I'm recommending Security Essentials, but that typically changes, so you might want to check back from time to time. Now let's go down to the uh, 7-Zip Extractor. 7-Zip Extractor is basically a utility that will allow you to extract .zip files, um, .rar files, and things like that. You can just go to File Open, and what it'll do is it'll come to the root directory, and we're going to go ahead and uh, we can either create a zip file by highlighting two of these and clicking Add, and then we can create our own nice little .7z file. And if we don't want it to be a 7z, we can do .tar, .wim, .zip. And this will allow us to actually create our own compressed files, so it'll actually make it smaller. And then if you have a compressed file already, you can just open up the compressed file by double-clicking on it. I don't have one easily accessible. But 7-Zip is a great tool. It's open source, and you can use it for commercial use. So check that one out as well. The third one I'm going to talk about is Auslogic's disk defragmentation software. Uh, a lot of people like to use Defragler. They're both really great. Auslogic's usually... Uh, usually does a great job of optimizing the hard drive as well. All you need to do is after you've installed it, you can just select this drop down and click defrag. It'll automatically analyze your drive and then it'll run a defragmentation. Uh, for those of you who don't know, defragmentation is basically <clears throat> your uh, file system gets restructured so that the most commonly used files are actually closer to the central pin of the drive so it can access them faster. That's the optimization part of it. And the defragmentation is taking the bits and pieces of the files that are in a bunch of different areas of your drive and putting them all right next to each other. So that way they can access them faster on the drive. So that's the AusLogic software. Like I said, I'm not spending too much time on these, um, but uh, just optimize it and you'll be good to go with that. VLC Media Player, this is a great tool uh, for opening up pretty much any media file you can imagine. Uh, it'll play videos, DVDs, uh, .avi, .mpg, .mp4, .ogg, you name it. They can play just about any audio or video file you can imagine. I install this on just about every machine that I start out with uh, because, well, quite frankly, you never know what you're going to come across on the internet. So doesn't mean you have to replace your primary Windows media player with it, but it's good to have just in case you come across a media file you're not used to opening. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is, I'm going to scroll past OpenOffice. That's a great tool if you uh, guys you know don't have Microsoft Word or something on your computer. It has all the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and those on there. Uh, Foxit PDF Reader. This is a great one, and a lot of people don't know about this one. This is essentially a very, very, very fast version of uh, <clears throat> Adobe Reader. And when you open a PDF file, it doesn't take eight hours. Let me go ahead and open one of those. I know I've got one of those in here somewhere. 
Let me go to my documents and scroll down to a PDF file. I know I've got to have one in here. We go. I can just double click on it and boom, it's pretty much up right away. That's, that's the great thing about this software. It actually runs really great. And personally, I like it better than the Adobe Reader that everyone pretty much goes and gets. Uh, the next one is the PDF Creator. Now, this is a great tool. It's open source. It's actually free for commercial use, so your company can use it. Now, you don't actually have to run the PDF Creator to make your document. All you need to do is just open up a Word document, any kind of document. Type in whatever you want. You don't have to do Word. You can do Excel. You can print from your, your browser. And just go to File and Print. And then you, from your drop-down, it installs a printer called PDF Creator. Then you just select the Print button. And within seconds, you will have, let me save it to my desktop, a PDF copy of your document. So I can just open that up, and there it is. So you can literally convert just about any file to PDF just by printing to it. Now that's a great tool. I, I don't know any computers that couldn't use that. So that's another great one for you guys to follow. Let's go back here. We've got the C Cleaner. This is one of the more popular ones everyone knows about. And this will clean out all the junk from your computer. Uh, typically, before I run it, I always disable the browser that I use. Personally, I use Firefox and Chrome, so I disable those because I don't want all my history and stuff deleted out of them. And then when you're done, just click Analyze. It'll find all the junk on your computer. And then once it's found it, you can actually select Run Cleaner. Wow, I got a bunch of junk to run the cleaner. Let me let that run, and let's pull up what we got here now. Scroll down, Google Chrome, probably one of my favorites, and this is probably the last one we're going to go over. Yeah, it looks like it. Google Chrome is a web browser, much like Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. It is the fastest one in my opinion. Again, it kind of depends on what you do. The debate is always between Chrome and Firefox. Uh, <clears throat> but personally, I, I love Chrome, and it'll greatly increase your uh, Internet speeds. Now remember, all these downloads are available at my website. That's pcmichiana.com slash downloads. That's pcmichiana.com. That's in northern Indiana. That's what Michiana comes from. Kind of regret naming my website that. But uh, as always, stay tuned. I'm going to do the web series still. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to switch it up a little bit this week. And stay tuned for future episodes. And I hope you guys stick around, subscribe, leave comments. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again.